Hello, everyone, and welcome back to episode six of Anime on Draft. Uh, as always, I am Drew, and uh, joined joining me this week again are Rolando. Hello. And Alec. How's it going? So we're looking forward this week, um, actually really anxious to start talking about um, Attack on Titan. A bunch of crazy shit went down this week, um, so we're Nuts. super excited about that. Um, also, we're going to be talking about Arrow Manga, Sakura, Sakura Quest, Sakura Reset, and a, a couple others, so look forward to that. But uh, first off, let's start off with our beer for this week. We are, are going to be reviewing the Elysian Dayglow IPA. As always, I am picking an IPA because I love the IPAs. <laughs> but um, before we get started, do you guys have anything you want to add, or should we just uh, start pouring and get awesome. into it? The bottle's awesome. And the artwork bottle. is cool. <laughs> yeah, it's so We'll cool. post it on our Instagram, but uh, I'm going to try to do this bottle justice. The... It, it has, you know, Elysian, Dayglow IPA, and then um, a tiger shooting rainbows uh, out of its eyes. So, yeah, <laughs> super, screw, super screw awesome sharks. bottle. No sharks with laser beams <laughs> on their heads. I'll take a tiger with rainbow laser eyes. <laughs> laser <laughs> Any day. Beams. Laser and, and that's, I mean, we all know that I like APAs, but this is the reason I chose this one, is because... <laughs> This bottle is fucking tight. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um, and shout a lot out to of this Seattle. Brewery. It's a uh, Seattle brewery, so um, I'm always uh, a lot always of the, gonna try to rep the uh, Pacific Northwest. Their um, beers have some pretty crazy artwork on them, like the uh, mm-hmm. what's the other one? The one with the the hop that's like uh, what was it? It's like the the hop the, dust or something. Yeah, or? hop dust, hop dust. But it's like there's a hop with eyes, and it's like eating something or something i don't know it's, that one's i think it's like too. barfing sprinkles or something yeah <laughs> yeah that's what it is it's like vomiting sprinkle sprinkles or and i know dust. we've had the uh i think it's like the split shot it's like a coffee stout um mm-hmm. which is also very good so that one was cool it was like a latte on it but mm-hmm, yeah this brewery mm-hmm. I, they have some good stuff yeah ton of sure. ton of good beers from uh this brewery but uh, mm-hmm. let's pour this guy out and uh you know get into our first impressions for it the first thing I wanted to talk about was the color is super interesting for an IPA. It's got the color of like a a wheat beer. It's light. Yeah, I I agree. It's definitely light, and it looks like it will be citrusy, and it smells citrusy. The foam sits, or the head sits for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I poured mine out, and and it's like clinging mm-hmm. to the side a lot, and it's got a thick. Um, large head and it's just it's chilling there it's not a lot of carbonation rising rising. Mm -hmm. that's what i was gonna ask is how's the carbonation for your guys is it's really bubbly it's really really bubbly i think it kind of smells kind of tart yogurt yogurty i think that's part of the citrus acidic i definitely get let lemon there's definitely some kind of uh fruits for sure Mm-hmm. I get um, fruit smells more than I get hops personally. Um, my nose is a little stuffy, but what I the the smell I get from it it smells like a wheat beer to me, um, like a wheat beer with fruit and then hops. It, it just it doesn't uh, smell like a typical IPA to me for whatever reason. Yeah, it's I not mean, as I have floral. Bad allergies, but smelly. I think you could garnish this even with like some sort of fruit, like an orange or something like that, and it would it would be it would pineapple be pineapple would be good. Yeah, pineapple would be actually really good. I'm imagining like what it would taste like just judging from the smell and like I feel like it wouldn't be very hoppy, but that's just that's what I'm thinking too from well, from smell. sorry to uh, burst your bubble, but I tasted it and it's very hoppy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and sip this. Yeah, it it's not like when you first drink it, it's not at at first like hoppy, but like the aftertaste is hops like punches you right in the face yeah we've talked about that like that feeling in the back of your mouth where it like lingers the bitterness of the hops and stuff like that it definitely has that but super super drinkable for for what it is um it's it's a lot lighter uh like we said i mean even the color is lighter but it's lighter and very drinkable for me i actually really yeah. like this it's actually pretty good i like this better than the um What's it called? Double fucking IPA. The, the double fucking IPA. Yeah, that. Yeah. This is really good. Um, <laughs> this is probably for me, one of the best IPAs I've had. It comes out real smooth. Like when you first drink it, it comes in real smooth, kind of like you would expect from 
like the smell. It doesn't smell like it's going to really hit you with bitter straight out of the gate. Um, you kind of get that. I get like, I don't know, kind of wheat malt at first with fruitiness, I guess. And then the hops come in right after, like you guys are saying, and it just it sticks in the back of your mouth. But for me, it's not that hoppy. It's like I would actually I'm going to like probably get another one <laughs> after I finish this one. And I don't normally say that about IPAs. They've got to be good. It's more crisp than anything. Like it's very mm-hmm. clean for mm-hmm. an IPA. And it, yeah. it almost doesn't even remind me of an IPA. It, it reminds me more of a, a wheat, a wheat style beer. Mm-hmm. Um, but the aftertaste is what it's like, Oh, this is an actual IPA. Yeah. This is, you know, why it's, you know, what shocks this. me is I'm looking at this and it's just, I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but the bubbles are just like, blah, 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 just going mm-hmm. up yeah, the going entire, nuts. and then when you drink it, I don't really feel the carbonation. It doesn't mm-hmm. like hit my mouth. Like the, the beer we had, um, or the, was it the sour one? Of, I think it was the sour last week. It, you can really, Dutchies, you really yeah. could feel the, uh, carbonation, you know, on your tongue. I don't get that with this one, which is, you know, kind of shocking given how many, like how many bubbles are coming out of mm-hmm. mine. It's very smooth. Mm-hmm. I, I do. Like I do think that um, this would pair um, pair well with um, with with lighter foods, um, just because it feels it. It's kind of got like a palate cleansing type. Um, what, you, what I'm saying, like uh, it, it, it's kind of like a palate cleanser. Um, it's refreshing. I think it's because. Yeah, it, I think it's because of the tartness that yeah. you kind of get with it. It it, it kind of destroys everything else in your mouth. So, you know, you take a bite of food and then you have a sip of this and then it, your mouth is ready to go for something else and you kind of crave something else, but something light as well. It's yeah, but of, you're not, you know, it's not lingering. The taste isn't lingering mm-hmm. in your mouth like a lot of other IPAs, which is why yeah. you don't really take IPAs with a lot of the lighter foods. It feels mm-hmm. like this might go good with... Honestly, like I know this might sound r- like ridiculous because it's an IPA, but I think it would go good with fish. <laughs> yeah, to be I was actually thinking yeah. thinking of that when I was saying like light foods. But the fish has to be like made right. Like yeah. with if, if if the fish has like fruity aspects to it, or you know sometimes people will put that kind of thing on it. I think right. it'd be really good if you're going with like a grilled fish with pepper and sriracha. I don't know if this is you know <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, but I feel it, like it might you be, know. I would I would definitely drink this if I was eating like sushi or something like mm-hmm. it you can still get the complexity of the fish and not have this lingering hops taste in your mouth mm-hmm. after just I'm taking I'm picturing a like a halibut dude mm. <laughs> this is gonna, this is going to sound really random but I think this would go really good with duck for some reason <laughs> I don't know like the the fatty like the fatty richness of the duck but it's like duck is still lean and light um with a you know some sort of vegetable to go along with it I think it would be really good with that This I, uh, is definitely I a beer you duck can pair so with long. food Yeah yeah this and I I feel like this is one you want to pair with food because I think it's like 7. Point, what is it Seven, I think it's seven, seven point seven. four or seven point seven. Yeah, it's it's up there. You know, seven seven point anything is is yeah, a seven pretty four, sturdy. Right. Seven point four. That's a pretty sturdy percentage there. So like, it's definitely yeah. something you want to eat with. You're not going to session beer this. <laughs> it does. It doesn't feel that heavy though. It, it's no. it's like we've been talking about the whole time. It's super mm-hmm. light. So yeah, it doesn't make you feel well, like oh, I'm so full. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And. um the same thing with the the mouth feel. It's it's not overwhelming, so you're not like, mm-hmm. Ugh, this is just IPA and it's lingering. Yeah. But it's just heavy in my stomach, mm-hmm. on my mouth. All I get, I drink it and I get hit by bitter to be lingered by bitter. <laughs> just uh, <laughs> that's what I think when I think of IPAs. I don't like. I like this one. I put like I like this one and I like three ninety four the Ale Smith. Yeah, three ninety four is definitely a little heavier than this, but this is, is this is they're 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 different. They're I don't think mm-hmm. you can really compare them. No, but I'm just mean in terms of uh, IPAs I like. Where I did not sure. like the double fucking IPA. I did not. <laughs> well, that was, I did that not. Was, that was a lot. <laughs> that was awful. It killed me. Murder. Death. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Alec, I'm curious to hear your rating um, since you, again, you're not a big IPA guy, but, uh, you know, you seem to like this. Uh, what are you thinking for this one? Um, it's going to, you know, for me, it's going to get a pretty high rating. Um, I like the, the color's cool. The bottle's awesome. It's got good head retention. The, the flavors and smells are, you know, the flavors are pretty true to what you smell from it. Um, 
and the the I, the bitters the hops punch isn't that bad for me. It's definitely there, but it's not that bad. So I'd probably give this I'm going to say like three and a quarter. So that's maybe three and a half. Let's go three and a half. That's what I'm going to give it. Um, right just because it's still, you know, kind of got some of those aspects of the IPAs that make them a little harder for me to drink, but it's definitely like I could have two of these in a row and then be like, all right, let me go to something else. <laughs> cool. Cool. Rolando, what are you thinking? I really like this beer. Um, it's really it's good. Like usually when I think of IPAs, um, for, like first thing that comes to my mind is like Sculpin. Um, this is probably my second favorite IPA. So um, what's your first? What? <laughs> what's your first favorite IPA? I just said Sculpin. You just said you think of Sculpin. Yes, because that is my favorite IPA. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so back to the rating. I think that. I'll give this like a four and a half. Cool. Pretty, pretty high praise. Uh, I'm right up there with you though. I'm, I'm going to rate it um, four and uh, three quarters. This is, this is actually really good. It's, it's light and refreshing. And what's really doing it for me is the citrus um, and not just like orange peel, um, heavy citrus, like I'm used to with IPAs, but like this refreshing lemon uh, that I'm really getting, I'm, I'm really enjoying this and it's making it, you know, really enjoyable um, and easy to drink, which is, which is awesome. So four and uh, three quarters for me, um, high praise for this one. It, It was, it was awesome. So three quarters. (laughs) <laughs> 4 point75 for uh our uh non us uh listeners <laughs> would, you, would you like a couple nickels with that for the people mm. that do not understand how fractions work <laughs> <laughs> right on right on uh anything else you guys want to add before we move on going to the artwork on the bottle it's kind of uh you see a tiger you think oh man it's gonna be fierce but it's more like a like a gentle kitty it looking at the bottle too, you kind of look at it and you're like, is this really going to be very good? <laughs> Cause it doesn't seem like, you know, a beer that's going to take itself too seriously. And I've tried like a lot of beers in the past where I was just like, this bottle's cool. And then it was like, not very good. And this is kind of the opposite. The bottle is absolutely absurd. Like it's like a weird rave on the bottle and then it's actually really good. So well, uh, look forward to the picture on Instagram, guys, after this. Uh, definitely something you're going to want to check out. And if you can pick up a bottle of this, I think it goes highly recommended from all of us, especially maybe if you were scared of trying an IPA or didn't, you know, didn't really think you'd like them. This is this is a good starter IPA to, to, I have to, to agree start with that. on. Yeah. That would be, this would uh, be a good one to hop But into. moving on, um, I know we are all super hyped to talk about Attack on Titan. So we are on Attack on Titan episode six of this season or 30 excuse me uh, 31 episode 31 uh entitled warrior uh alec do you want to start us off uh what were your impressions um well obviously the ending was uh some crazy shit going on um i liked that though the part i liked most about the episode um obviously besides them transforming and then the fight's going to break out obviously um but was when they went back and they were talking about how they were suspecting reiner and bertolt already uh I, I thought that was really interesting all the stuff they were talking about there and and the, going back to season one how he was like being held in um annie's hand or whatever and and she was like changing i was like i wouldn't have never thought about any of that but now i'm like oh if i go back and watch i bet you it makes sense so that was pretty cool yeah i thought that was super cool that was one of the main points i wanted to talk about like the whole you know annie because like Reiner brings up, you know, how he's been fucked up by Titans a couple times. You know, he gets his arm bitten and then he's like, uh, oh, yeah, Armin, d- don't you remember when I almost died to the the female Titan? And mm-hmm. you give he gives us that little flashback of, uh, you know, breaking out of her hand and stuff like that. Um, but that was super cool how they, they brought that in and was like, you know, hey, maybe, you know, he wrote her a note or was talking to her when uh, she was in his hand. And, you know, right after that, um, they meet and stuff like that. That, and he breaks out she gen- then makes a fucking beeline right where Aaron's going mm-hmm. um so that was that was super cool for me um I really liked that uh that little touch that they added they were saying like she she could have given he could have told her his position in the thing because he was asking blonde kid right Armin Ar- Armin Armin, yeah. Armin yeah. I was like blonde kid uh yeah because the 
do you do you really think he wrote it like wrote it with his blades in her hand or he was talking to her? I he think probably he wrote, wrote it. it. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, they <clears> probably would have heard him because <laughs> he'd have to True. probably yell. I think to yeah for her to over be to hear it. all the noise that I'm yeah. sure was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was a. Uh, like g- going back and finding out that that's what really happened was kind of like a huge like trip mm-hmm. but uh i thought what was interesting is like remembering back to actually what happened in those episodes back in season 1 cuz they they purposely told that group um where Aaron wasn't cuz like there was i believe they believe there was like some sort of suspicion going going on because there was like the female titan right and so yeah, like, and they 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 mentioned that too back in season one. They're like, we're spreading this miscommunication because we can't trust anybody, basically. Right. And so it's kind of weird how that like that was actually just the like the group that they told was like, oh, he's going here, and then all of a sudden like um, that's where Andy attacked from. It's like, oh shit! Now we know that their plan there like actually fished out the the suspicious people. Hmm. It just took a while. Every, everything's <laughs> coming, coming kind of full circle <laughs> a little bit. Um, but yeah, another another thing we kind of learned is that Ymir is still alive, uh, mm-hmm. which is yeah. which is really cool. We had that little debate last week, um, and we know that um, before this giant battle ensues, um, they grab the two titans, uh, the colossal titan and the armor titan, grab her um, and are going to take them or take her with them to wherever they're going i mean obviously aaron too but he's like yo yo fuck this yeah we, we gonna we gonna fight <laughs> she was like getting blown off the wall when they were transforming and they caught her and were holding mm-hmm. on to her so the, i'm curious what they're gonna do with her because of that flashback where they saw her like eat their friend yeah. or, or whatever so i'm curious like if they have if she's grouped with them and she's bringing them back to to you know i don't think she's their group with them because uh they were so surprised when they saw her transform and especially by what she transformed into and then giving us that flashback so yeah i was gonna i was gonna ask how do you think that ties in do you think that she is involved with them or that she's maybe like a one-off group and they're gonna bring her back to the main group and say like hey this bitch is a titan how the fuck did this happen what do you guys think about that i don't think she's part of that group um so like we've already had our suspicions that the hybrids are not necessarily working together. And mm-hmm. I think that she is probably part of some sort of group that is related to the church. Um, okay. Because we do see that she is from the, from inside the walls, I believe. Um, I'm not completely certain that she is, but like, that's just kind of what it seems like from the previous episode. I think she is because she was saying when when they showed her hiding in the church and listening to the guys talking about the girl i about um Krista i feel like that had to be from in the walls because if Krista's royalty then you know the two church dudes would be talking about her in, right maybe in a you know in the inner area what's so. uh what's interesting too is we know that Reinhardt Reiner i keep calling him fucking Reinhardt Reinhardt yeah. <laughs> i was doing Reiner. that earlier <laughs> Reiner, Berthold, and Annie are all from the same region, and we get that mm-hmm. from that note that Sasha um, brought to the uh, scouts before they, you know, went off to Trost about her uh, their background check or whatever. Yeah, 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 and and then it's like you know everybody's kind of thinking you know like well Annie didn't talk much anyway, but you know Reiner and Berthold are kind of always together, and Reinhardt is like this big brother figure for everybody. Um, but it's, it's interesting to see. And I, what, what, um, came to my mind too was, um, when they were training and doing like hand to hand combat and stuff, um, the interaction between Reiner and Annie, when they, you know, Annie, you know, flips him over and beats the shit out of him kind of and fucks him up, but like (laughs) kicks his ass. Yeah. And she's like, you know, my dad taught me to fight and, and all this stuff. It just, it reminded me of that scene. Um, do you guys think that's significant or, I mean, I don't re- really remember that scene too much. I just remember it happened. <laughs> so I, I'm, I can't really comment on that. I mean, maybe you could see that scene uh, now after we're learning all this stuff. Maybe that scene, if you know, thinking back on it, it was it, her her goal there was to try and like differentiate herself from Reiner to maybe reduce sure. suspicions on her. If like all three of them are buddy buddy, then if one of them suspicious, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe something like that. But 
I don't Do know. you think maybe they they could be like passing on information in between each other during that scene or anything like that? Or is it just like kind of what you said, the differentiation or trying to separate each other? Weren't they surrounded by people at the time? Yeah, I mean, the, with all the 104, everybody who was, you know, training with them. It would probably be kind of hard to like pass off information yeah. or anything like that. Okay. Um, I Personally, I think if there's like meaning in it, it's like her trying to make sure that they don't they're not seeing her as like, oh, they're friends. They, you know, they're all suspicious. She's like doing her, her own thing or whatever and trying to make, you know, cause then she was like, he was, he gave her the message or whatever, but no one would suspect that he was like, if they find out it's Annie, it took him a while to suspect him because it didn't seem like they were buddies probably because she was kicking his ass. <laughs> yeah. It also probably just shows her actual like skill. combat skill. Um, like mm-hmm. how much better she is at fighting than he is. Cause like yeah. at the end he does talk about how like he's a warrior and uh, like the, the reason why he episode. does is to fight and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up too, before we, uh, before we move on, how do you think the Titans got into the wall? I mean, we see Hans and he's, he shows up Hans, um, but he shows up and is, is like, there's no hole in the wall guys. Like how the hell are, are there Titans in here? So what, what do you, what are your guys' impressions on that? Um, well, I, I mean, <clears throat> it could just be that like, um, what's his name? Connie's mom transformed. Maybe it's some sort of like epidemic it's Titan disease, dude. It's like elephantitis, but. You get like super buff and it's called Titan finitis. I don't know, dude. <laughs> yeah. But like a lot of hybrids are probably roaming around in there as well. So yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a lot more to it than the people actually understand. So mm-hmm. I'm sure there's some sort of group of people that are within the walls that either are like Aaron and have no idea they can transform or are like Emir and can transform and it has something to do with like maybe the church and like the mm-hmm. nobility and all that. And there's somebody who knows it, it in, as we go in the wall, they're going to find people who like know about this stuff. And, and I'm curious you, to find more people who can understand the writing like Ymir. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what, what, and what do you think the beast that? Titan has anything to do with it? Do you think he plays like a significant role in these guys appearing? Hmm. I mean, we didn't we didn't really see him much this episode. It, we didn't see him at all. We know he's running around like a madman, throwing horses and shit. Like, <laughs> but um, do you think you he see, plays? That's it? where I'm confused. So, like, I'm not really sure where, like, what his motives are because he doesn't seem like. It doesn't seem like. Emir knows what the heck that guy is, and it doesn't seem like neither neither Reiner nor Bertolt know like what mm-hmm. that dude is so like mm-hmm. it could just be a whole a whole different other group um that's somehow related to the origin of titans i guess mm-hmm. yeah, yeah and i'm not sure if he's a hybrid or not i was thinking maybe he's like an important dude but what he was saying about how the the scout weapon is curious or, or whatever it doesn't sound like something if he were let's say he's an important you know royal person they would know he's what the scout weapon had, looked like yeah he's had to have had like minimum human interaction to not know mm-hmm. what like the main weapons they use to exactly. you know fight titans are so yeah even like random people who are like you know um i, don't, I was going to say pedestrians but like civilians or whatever they're they're like <laughs> oh that's they know the weapon you know and they're not yeah. hanging out with them every day so yeah so uh one one thing i wanted to to mention about this episode was you know, when Reiner starts talking to Aaron and like basically just says, hey, I'm the I'm the armored Titan and Bear Tolt's the colossal Titan. Um, mm-hmm. You just like see like Aaron's crazy expression, eyes. but in the fucking back, you just see Mikasa's <laughs> fucking face yeah. and she yeah. looks like she's like, that's the look of someone that's about to fucking kill someone that kill you like she looked like she was gonna fucking kill reiner just like like right there yeah (laughs) well she she did try i mean she put she slashed Bertold's throat and cut off reiner's arm so Mm -hmm. i mean she she tried her best (laughs) and then um Bertold didn't even fully transform he's like a rib cage grabbing the wall he and then he a torso there's two things I, I think about that. One is he knows about the Titans in the wall and doesn't want to destroy the wall. Cause I think if he transformed fully, he would have fucked up that wall. And it's like, well, 
that's I mean that might be his motive too but that was one thing I was thinking of the second thing I can think of is he needs a lot of fucking energy to transform because he is a huge motherfucker yeah he's when, the uh, huge tall guy that broke yeah. that was the in first, the first wall, epi- yeah. the first episode mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so either he needs he needs a ton of energy or preparation to transform or you know he didn't want to destroy the wall completely those are my two kind of theories there but you're right he didn't fully transform he's got like his rib cage stuck into the wall like alex said and like most of his upper body but not mm-hmm. none of his legs or anything like that yeah you you might be right now that you're saying he doesn't want to break the wall because they didn't break a wall originally either they busted a gate which mm-hmm, yeah. was um, sectioned off. And the the only part of uh, any wall that got broken was where, you know, there was the, the hole with the, the guy peeking through, like, yo, what's exactly. up, boys? And then they put a blanket <laughs> over his head. And they were like, yeah. no. Go, shh, shh, go to sleep. Shh, shh, quiet. Shh, shh. No, close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is kind of weird it's that, techni- like, they just want Aaron, but their goal at first was to wipe out humanity, but Mm -hmm. now it doesn't matter as long as Aaron goes back with them. So it's like, what? Like somehow that's just like weird that your motive just all, Oh, (laughs) we don't need to kill all of humanity now. It's like, "Eh, that's kind of weird. Maybe they, they either have ties with the dad or they want to get the dad and they can use him as collateral, something along those lines. Um, who knows, you know? Yeah, like they need his dad to do some to do right. something or whatever. I mean he always to wipe out something. humanity. We have we have this injection that Aaron gets and now he can be a Titan, so it's maybe like, oh, that's super important. You know, who who, right. who really knows? Maybe he is leading that that group because Reinhardt or Rein goddamn <laughs> Reiner. <laughs> <laughs> swing your hammer, swing your hammer. Reinhardt, go. <laughs> Reinhardt, charge. Because <laughs> Reiner, when he was like talking about how he's like, Am I going crazy? You know, I've been screwed over. And he was saying, if I just like if I had been I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was basically like if I hadn't done that that day, then I wouldn't be like this, you know, half ass thing that I am now. So it was like, did he get an injection like Aaron as well? And now he, that's why he can transform. And so is his dad, Aaron's dad, like leaving, leading their group or, you know, I don't know. Well, we don't even know if the injection makes people tighten. That's true. Maybe it was just like a bunch of vitamins. You're like, Aaron, you need, you need vitamins. You're malnourished. <laughs> no, like, no, here, it was take steroids. This. It was steroids. <laughs> I'm actually kind it's of like wondering you need if, to get big. if uh, what Reiner was saying was actually like, if he actually thinks that his time spent within the walls is turned him into someone that was half-assed as compared to someone that had conviction back when they first broke down the broke open the wall five years ago. Well, maybe, maybe he has sympathy for the people or humanity now. Cause maybe he grew up outside yeah. the walls and didn't know any better. But now that he's interacted with humanity, he's like, these people aren't that bad. Like he's like, like he's along with each other. 90% of these compassion. people aren't bad. The royals. Well, I mean, and the he wants, suck, but <laughs> he he wants to marry Krista. I mean, that's yeah. that's a big plot point, right? Like, <laughs> um, but I mean, in all seriousness, he, you know, he he has sympathy maybe for these people now. At least his friends in the hundred and fourth, because I mean, like they said, everyone sees him as this big brother, this like nurturing role. Um, so he he you know he sees them as as not as bad as maybe when he had minimum human interaction. So and when he transformed, he didn't immediately just go to like kill people he grabbed Aaron and jumped off the wall and then even um Bertolt yeah. when he's the colossal one he reaches over everyone and catches Ymir and it, I mean like maybe mm-hmm. in the next episode they're gonna start trying to punch people but as of right now it didn't look like he transformed and then you know started swiping at people so right um maybe you know that what you're saying about the you guys are saying if, about the if compassion. OP art means anything though is we see those two um fighting against the scouts like uh Bertolt destroyed a mountain and is throwing rocks at people and mm-hmm. then Aaron is fighting the uh the armor titan so you know who knows really maybe he gets his conviction uh, back and he's like nah <laughs> screw you guys i'm gonna kill you it's like i wasn't gonna because i liked you but now i don't right. so die <laughs> Well, cool. Um, a lot of a lot of good conversation out of this episode, uh, but mm-hmm. uh, we do have to move on. Um, any final quick words that uh, you guys want to put in before uh, we go? Next episode's going to be awesome. I think That's so it. too. <laughs> I really do. Fight, yeah. fight, fight. 
Yeah, dude. I want to see the fight. I'm excited for the fight. Yeah, it's it's get some good fight. action. Going. Uh, I'm curious. I'm curious to see too, uh, real quick, if um, if Aaron has any more control over his Titan because we haven't seen him transform this season, mm-hmm. uh, and he was doing a lot of training with the scouts and stuff like that. So it'll be interesting to see if he gains any more powers or um, more control over uh, his transformation. So looking all they showed is uh, in the preview, he charges at Reiner, he gets punched in the face and knocked back. So. <laughs> <laughs> And his yeah. face is like missing skin and stuff. Not not very different from if they were hand to hand combat training. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, cool. Awesome. Um, looking forward to next week's for sure. Um, moving on though, let's talk about uh, Soccer Quest. Did uh, this week's episode, the uh, budding of Yggdrasil, uh, trigger you guys as much as it did last week? No. No. Not at all. No. Not at all. <laughs> last last week was a fluke. Last week. <laughs> oh my! Oh, just thinking about it. Anyways, anyways, I digress. <laughs> Probably because we didn't see that dude as much, and then when he did, this, we did see him. He was actually slightly thankful. Yeah, he was slightly um, thankful, slightly better. The one uh, motif that I uh, wanted to mention, um, we talked a little bit about it before about the uh, the naming conventions of the different episodes of Norse mythology and different things like that, but. Um, this episode, again, the budding of Yggdrasil, um, and we s- kind of see it through this episode. We have new life or a new beginning for this town. We're starting to, you know, with the girls, um, gain a new viable option for promoting this town. And this is just the beginning, the start. Um, mm-hmm. Do you guys agree or? Yeah, I think so. I think that you that you could see it that way. It's like a new uh, a new thing for a lot of people because you also see the IT girl. She's kind of like got, you know, new vigor into into her job or whatever so it's like all around kind of that feel and and i think we talk about it every week but the juxtaposition of old versus new um i think now we've finally given up a lot of the old we're giving up the the old castle the chupacabra castle or whatever and we're moving it you know to um the train station which is like the hub or the entrance way of uh, of the town where you know they've mentioned it multiple times where everybody enters the town through here. This is the Mm -hmm. portal to the town. This is where we want to make, you know, our biggest impact on new people coming here. Um, so again, we get rid of that old, the chupacabra, the stupidness of that. And we get this new where we're celebrating, you know, culture, we're celebrating different art. We're celebrating a ton of different things about this town that is uh, super important to everybody. Yeah. Tying, tying into that with the old and new theme, um, in this specific episode, it's like this, the new generation learning from the old. So like we see Yoshino and the girls are like going out and learning about the the old wood carvings. And then they the find Ranma. out like, oh, like the Ranma, like they, these sculptors started making Ranma because no one needed Buddhist statues anymore. So like they had to make a living, you know, and then mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. it's like Tetsuo, um, <laughs> the the other wood sculptor the apprentice the um guy he's like um hey i'm gonna make these wooden shoes and he's like trying to get sanai to like help help him out because he, he's not like a big women's fashion yeah. expert so <laughs> he, he's right. trying to make women's shoes and he's a yeah. he's a single male right <laughs> yeah so like it, he it sh- he's kind of also showing like he's a new generation guy mm-hmm. like learning from what the old generation did, which is like, oh, this isn't viable anymore to make Ranma. Well, I'm going to, you know, carve my own path out. And um, mm-hmm. I thought it was pretty interesting that like there was this theme of, yes, the old out with the old in with the new. But like they're learning from the old to continue on um, and kind of advance their traditions. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there was that's, there's that's always that big. Idea. They're talking about how how they want to keep their traditions and it's a, a protected art, right? The the Ranma and all that. But then when uh, Sinai is talking to the apprentice guy and he's saying he's going to try to make shoes and she said, won't it make him mad? And he's like, yeah, I don't care. This is a job. There's no point in doing this if I can't make a living or something like that. And it was like, yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so <laughs> I, and that made um... me feel good inside. <laughs> What I was surprised is that he actually, we find out, you know, this little bit of backstory, the asshole apprentice was carving this, you know, Ranma for um, an old commission that, you know, his old master was doing. And then the guy who commissioned it when the master died, you know, I don't want it anymore, blah, blah, blah. I'm surprised he actually agreed to let the girls put it up in the train station. 
Um, but in the end, you know, we had visitors come in and they saw it like, oh, this is beautiful. Mm-hmm. This is amazing. Um, and he, he has this little smirk on his face almost. Uh, you know, they say he, this is the highest form of praise that he's ever given. Um, he said it, to it's OK or something yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and he was accepting of it, which which was good. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, he's not screaming at him. Do you know what wood this is? Do you know you guys are fucking <laughs> assholes? It's like, <laughs> no, no, like Yoshino does now. <laughs> she does <laughs> now. Know. She, does. She, yeah, she does now know what the wood is. So that's, oh, that's judging important. by it, it looks like uh, this type of tree. <laughs> it looks like it was probably this big and this old. Oh, did you know that? Oh, I bet you didn't. You should stop carving. You don't know anything about this. You can't be a Ranma man. You can't do this anymore. Get the He's like, "Fuck, I'm leaving. I'm sorry." Um Dope. one thing I wanted to mention too was uh we got Sandals on our uh traveling bard, oh, the bard. guy. <laughs> he's actually like a famous oh, yeah, artist, dude. like yeah, like a famous <laughs> vagabond artist. Yeah, so that was that was pretty. He like gets arrested, and they're like, "Yeah, that How was did he the get best." Out so far? He's, oh, he was he was just hitchhiking. Like, yeah, what the fuck? that was the best, dude. That part was so funny. They're all he's, sitting he's there. A- oh, let's get him to draw something. <laughs> oh my god, he's getting arrested. <laughs> so good. That's so good. He he's he's actually one of my favorite characters. He's fucking hilarious. He's ridiculous. And he has um, one part of his name is Cena. John Cena, <laughs> dude. Well, that's 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 my wife, guys. Okay? <laughs> John John Cena is your wife? No, Senna from uh, I don't have any friends. I, well, anyway, I yeah, I was going more with the John Cena, but <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, be nice to me. I wish I had the button queued up and it go John Cena. Anyways, the cue the music. Yeah, um, it was pretty. It was pretty cool seeing the closure on that soul searching that Sanai had that began mm-hmm. last episode and like you know she's talking about we talked about last week how she's like oh everything I do I'm, I'm replaceable like yeah. every well, like my job exactly. anybody else can do it but Yoshino kind of is just like um yeah, that's actually for everyone. yeah that's true for everyone but to an extent like you yourself bring your own like a bit of your own individuality to to your job your so own flair you will do something differently than someone else whether like it's still going to get the job done but how you go about it is completely different and that's that's you that's you putting your your own stamp on it and that's kind of like what they're doing now with their 100 year sakura pond familia plan that they're like Mm going to revamp (laughs) the whole town and make it all like something that everyone can put their stamp on I like how her I'm original glad. idea was to make the castle a giant wooden castle. I'm gonna do the amount of trees. <laughs> I'm just you're, the amount of forest that you're gonna have to destroy. Come on! I, the whole time I was, they were saying that I'm like, you guys don't have any money. Yeah. How are you gonna <laughs> yeah. do this? Yeah, that is that as well. It needs to be like sky tree. It's like, well, you do know that they have money, like, to put that up in <laughs> in Tokyo, not in Monoyama. Right. <laughs> He's Going well back to uh, Sanai real quick too. I'm I'm glad she uh, she didn't run away too because I I think she's a cool character. Um, yeah. She brings a, a variety that um, this you know technology and uh, the knowledge of Tokyo to this town. So I'm glad that you know she didn't run away again and she's she's gonna stick it out. She's gonna be the minister of IT still. So that's cool. I like her character too because uh, mm-hmm. she's kind of got that like her the way the co- comedy they give her is kind of like sharp. And like, kind of mm-hmm. like, you know, biting witty, as opposed to other other the other characters. Her and uh, her and uh, R- uh, Ridiko are my favorite characters for sure. Mm. Yeah, she's definitely like the mature. She's older mm-hmm. than than the rest of them, so she's kind of got a bit of the mature personality out of the group. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. Um, that kind of wraps up that episode. Anything else you guys want to say, or should we move on? Uh-huh. I'm I'm looking forward to the next one. I think yeah. that it'll continue. Yeah, it's, it's gotten it's, better it's, as it's gone along. I think it's it's super consistent. It's not like oh my god, this is the best show ever, mm-hmm. and it's not like awful. It's it's just very consistently good, which is Enjoyable which is nice, watch. especially for yeah. this the type of genre that it is, because mm-hmm. this genre can be so hit or miss. Yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. um, I'm I'm always looking forward to seeing the next episode. It's it's cute. It's fun. It's yeah. um, it's not boring. There's there's something new. So and we yeah. kind of get to see now with the the budding of Eager Sill or whatever you want to call it. We get to see, you know, uh, from there um, what's going to happen with the town. And now that they've started this process, um, how they move life. forward. <laughs> Exa- exactly. Um, so. <laughs> also, the possibly budding of maybe a romantic 
love triangle between Ooh. the two wood carvers and Sanai. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see anything like that, but that, but that, that would be interesting for sure. That would be sure. kind of funny, actually. <laughs> they fight. They're like, I'm going to make a better world sculpture for, for yeah. her. <laughs> I'm going to sculpt her face. I'll make Ranma. <laughs> oh, okay. Right on, right on. Uh, moving on now, let's get into um, our favorite little sister segment of the day, uh, Arrow Manga Sensei, episode five. Let's plan a light novel with your little sister. Uh, anybody want to start us off? Uh, initial impressions. Uh, what do you guys think? Um, yeah. Um, I the the very first scene in this uh, in this episode <laughs> triggered me a little bit just because like um, we already talked about it last week, but uh, Masabune just like basically just screams out that he loves Sigiri, and then she's like, ah. You do? And then he's like, yes, as an older brother, yeah. I don't think any lewd things from my younger sister. And then she's like, but I was actually talking about the person that I love. He's like, yes, I don't think anything lewd about you. And completely skirting around the question, she gets pissed and then calls him an idiot. And then that part yeah. just kind of triggered me. <laughs> that that triggered me as well, because I was like, I'm kind of tired of that that trope it's been in so many shows Everything. that I've watched like all the time. And I'm just like, man, like, Oh, she's, Oh, well yeah. You know, I was talking about that person that I love and he's like, yeah, exactly. So you can't return my feelings. And it's like, you're fucking retarded. Why is everyone always so dumb? And then why does she just put a speaker outside and go idiot. And then like, it's like, okay. Yeah. That that's, that's how that conversation would play out. Let's yeah. Okay. All right. Whatever. Anyways, there's just too much I mean, of it out is... there. I, th- I was hoping it would like, resolve i don't know but it'll resolve eventually and then they'll yeah. get married it, it will definitely resolve i mean this is how the genre goes i mean the, we have to have this conflict between the main protagonist and the main you know heroine love or love interest whatever you want to call them and eventually you know they'll make up and then they'll make out and then they'll get married or something yeah. uh, kind of like our last screen cap for uh or emo go uh, <laughs> go ahead and check out episode five on youtube <laughs> but um <laughs> Anyway, yeah, it it was a little frustrating, but this is this is I've watched so many shows of this type of harem, like little sister genre or whatever you want to call it, and this is we're we're par for the course. This is uh, this is the direction we're heading, and uh, you know we just have to add a couple more girls in there, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be right on track. <laughs> um, Moving on, uh, we kind of have, uh, like the title suggests, that uh, Sagiri and uh, uh, Masamune are working on this light novel together. They're trying to, you know, brush it up so that they can actually publish this thing. Because uh, if they publish it right now, it's it's not going to sell. It's not going to be good. Um, we get confirmation from the editor that says, hey, if you give me, you know, this uh, this proposal and it, it works out, you know, we're going to we're going to publish this thing. So, you know, extra motivation for them to uh, get everything right um, and be working on that and we also see um masamune asking for uh yamada elf sensei's help um to kind of mentor him um in the way of you know making this good proposal so that we can you know get this thing published so mm-hmm. that's kind of kind of the direction we're going he asks the uh, bookstore girl to show uh Aramanga sensei her panties <laughs> oh yeah, that was, that was that was kind of another development. Uh, Sigidi, I guess, is having like writer's block or draw <laughs> illustrator's block, block whatever, illustrator's block, <laughs> whatever, block. whatever you want to call. It. He's like, I can only draw lolies. Like, help <laughs> <Yeah>. me. <laughs> she's like, that's I have she to see herself somebody herself with and, big and boobs. And now elf. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. Now, well, Elf was standing in that beautiful pose with her uh, bloomers off and uh, skirt raised um, in a, a provocative uh, stance. And now I'm, I can only draw lollies now, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's She's like, I lit the I've fire been, in her. I've been desperately well, thinking so, of a way to see see someone with big boobs, panties, without leaving my room. <laughs> it's like, what well, the I, fuck I, is going? I on? like uh, I like the character art for the uh, the chick who runs the bookstore. So maybe we can get a lewd pose with her. I I wouldn't be opposed to that. <laughs> Speaking of of her, like at at the end, we've got Megumi, like meeting Masamune there to like discuss how she can become friends with Sagiri, and uh, she's just like she says the statement. Yeah, I'll, I just need to do things that she likes, so I'm going to read those creepy otaku books. Oh, yeah. And, and then that faces. clearly triggers Tomoe. Yeah. She's just like... <laughs> both, both of them. She he looks like, like shocked, oh. and she's like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> 
the look on her face was the same look that Mikasa had when Ryan was talking <laughs> Not his ears. Her eyes were closed. No. So it, who, who knows whether that's scarier or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But... Um, Good episode for sure. Um, what do you What do you guys think about the show so far? Are you, Are you enjoying it? Are you enjoying covering it more in um, detail um, as we've been doing for the past couple of weeks? Yeah, um, I I like this episode, barring the very you know first part that triggered me. But <laughs> the the pacing is fine. Um, I I am enjoying. I mean, some of the characters. I'm still not really sold on Sigiri yet, but she's not mm-hmm. she's not Kirino. So <laughs> she I mean, she has that is better than that, right? <laughs> <laughs> she she has that going for her. It's right now it's coming off a little cliche at points, but there are t- there are other parts that are like, okay, this is a little different. So like I I can, you know, get along get on with it. I think the main character is a little smarter than fucking Smoothske, that fucking yeah, bitch. Yeah. That's for sure. Um <laughs> he he seems to have a little bit more sense about him which is which is refreshing um and the outright denying of the little sister whether he sticks to that or not um i would be i would welcome that but again we're gonna come full He's circle in denial they're gonna, himself they're yeah. they're gonna bang or do something <laughs> <in denial. laughs> alec any impre- last impressions um no i think it's a it's kept up from the first episode kind of um entertaining you know it hasn't really fallen off so I'm, you know, I'm going to keep watching it. Looking forward to the next episode. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's uh, go on to our next show. Uh, Sakurata Reset. I know you guys mentioned you didn't really have much to say about it. Um, do you want to throw in your couple pieces? Um, Alec, you had I mean, opinions about it. Yeah, it's not really opinions about the the um, content of the episode. It's just that so the girl get her power. She can go into reflective objects and she goes into a marble that she sees and the whole time it's like so you imagine somebody who's in like a you know, a, a room i don't know and everything's bouncing around so they kind of give her this like echo and the way she talks it's like echoey and there's other sh- stuff that they do to make her sound like she's in a marble anyways it gave me a headache and she talked a lot in the episode she was talking all the time so i had to turn my volume way down and it was just awful so personally i not because of the content. I just wasn't too fond of this episode because uh, I already had a headache and then this gave me a worse one. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the, the girl Alex talking about is um, one of uh, Haruki and Kay's classmates, Sarah. And mm-hmm. uh, she's basically, you know, like your typical in-show character, the class president type, like st- stuck to her morals kind of deal. Mm-hmm. And in She's fact, gotta find pure objects. Yeah, in fact, her her <laughs> middle school classmates used to call her student monitor, mm-hmm, um, yeah. uh, and basically that was her nickname in school because she was like Miss Strict, Miss Responsible, follow follow the rules, and she kind of like the whole episode is about her wanting to break those rules, but like in her mind, she really doesn't want to break any rules. She wants to mm-hmm. be to keep the pure that's inside of her that her teacher yeah. like her middle school teacher told her the pure object yeah whatever that whatever that, that shit means. was i don't I, know what that means but okay. it's i don't know like trying <clears throat> to say that like you're pure at heart i guess but like I it's some, probably just some weird <laughs> lost in translation thing. yeah that's kind of what i was thinking <laughs> i was like this is kind of like uh, just kind of awkwardly like written <laughs> i was like i don't yeah. know but all right yeah so that's why i was basically maybe, yeah, they translated it weird yeah this is basically the it's exposition this is actually just the first um the first mission that haruki and Kay had as service club members in high school mm-hmm. and um we do see at the very beginning of the episode that uh, minase starts coming to class and um, she is going to be taken care of as, you know, like shown around, shown the ropes by Sarah. So it's probably just, you know, mm-hmm. this one off episode flashback backstory for this character, why she's important kind of deal. Mm-hmm. The one interesting thing about it, the show uh, was also the interaction they had with the, the teacher, the advisor. It was kind of different than it was in middle school or whatever. So interesting where they go with that middle school going forward oh. so you know the advisor that they had 
like before he was just kind of like, oh, here's a person. And then they would go talk to them. And then now he's he seems like he's really monitoring them because he called them and they were like, why haven't he was like, why haven't haven't you reset yet? And then he said, well, we're going to learn everything we can about it and blah, blah, blah. And then the guy hung up and he said, well, I guess they passed so far. And so I'm, you know, wondering what they're going to do with this advisor guy and where they're going to take um, the main characters with with that. So it was just an interesting little thing that happened. Do you guys think this show is like kind of losing its steam as it goes forward? Or do you think it's like interesting still? Or what are, what are your impressions going forward? Um, it's still interesting. I just, um, there was not really much to talk about with this episode. It was basically just yeah. exposition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it was just a, it, it's not that it's like, I mean, the first few episodes were really like crazy, you know, so um, these ones being a little slower seem like it's like, you know, slowing down a little, but I don't think it is. I think it's just setting up um, and it's I I don't it hasn't really lost entertainment value for me, though. I enjoyed watching this episode besides getting a headache um, because (laughs) it kind of got me thinking, oh, well, you know, if this one was kind of slow, how crazy is the next episode going to be or something like that? So, no. Cool. going to continue well, watching. Uh, sounds good. Um, those are our main topics this week in our pairing. Um, moving on towards our happy hour. I know I wanted to talk about uh, Reina Bukun for a little bit, so I'll start us off here. Um, kind of a quirky episode. Um, the couple of things that I wanted to point out um, was uh, the all the girls that are like quote related um akane yuzu and the the new girl um with the uh the pink hair and the creepy eyelashes shiki something i I can't remember her name i don't remember her name but um they all have like powers and they didn't really elaborate on it too much but i I guess that's the thing to look look at is like every single one of them has a power and akane for whatever reason excuse me uh gave up her power um or it's weakened and then you know bubblegum girl has bubblegum it's not really bubblegum but it's like i don't know what it is it's, it's sticky, like pink goop st- yeah. sticky pink shit yeah <laughs> that can trap people and then uh, yuzu has like that barrier power so mm-hmm. they, I, they're all related in some way i guess so that's kind of interesting um so they're kind of they're kind of switching it up um giving it some sort of theme to follow or storyline to follow, whatever you want to call it. Um, which was kind of interesting. But, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, Guri's dad is God. Um, <laughs> and we meet God and Satan and, uh, they're both like drunks and stupid, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it, it was pretty funny. It was a pretty comical scene. They kill, they kill the main protagonist and like, Hey, come up to heaven and, uh, let's chill. Uh, you know, I want you to treat my daughter and show her how to love and all this bullshit. He's like, all right, cool. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was kind of a lighthearted episode, but it was, it was funnier uh, than last week's for sure. I I might be biased though because I'm into the uh, torture, um, <laughs> stomping balls, all that uh, <laughs> good shit. So I uh, I enjoy uh, Pink Hair Girl's character. <laughs> Except her eyelashes, they're creepy as hell. I'm telling no, you. No, I'm I'm all about it, dude. I'm all about they're it. They're so creepy. <laughs> they're so weird. <laughs> um, any other shows that you guys want to talk about? Uh, Rolando, I'll open it up to you. Um. Not gonna lie, I don't really have anything else to say about <laughs> the other the other shows. Um, I forgot to watch uh, Saikono, and then uh, the other show I was covering was Sakurada, so we talked about that already. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cool, cool, Alec. Uh, anything you want to add for your shows or anything you're watching in general? Um, I'm watching Berserk right now, and I have to say that the episodes have gotten really good. So if anyone's looking for like an action pack kind of like medieval style show. It's a little weird. Definitely, definitely gruesome Dude, the episodes have gotten so good. Like they're, I, I can't wait till next week's episodes. Um, and then I know I was talking to you, uh, Rolando the other day, we were talking about Akashic records. Oh, and you're saying yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, biggest yeah. surprise of it's this been season. My biggest surprise. Yeah. You are it's been really good. Other stuff what yeah you're reminding me that i did watch other stuff yeah i was like i'm pretty sure we talked about the most recent episode the other day um that one's been really good akashic records of the bastard magical instructor which is an absurdly did we find out what akashic means this week boys no we didn't no no we didn't (laughs) i I think it was supposed to be this time or i think they were just teasing in the in the little like next episode teaser section Mm -hmm. thing they were just 
joking around or I don't know something it's i i think it's getting more interesting though because this yeah. past episode with the um with what happened the queen getting like abducted sort of and then her like daughter is now they were sentencing her to death and then now those two people show up and we don't know who they are but they're clearly strong so i'm getting even more excited like i really want to watch the next episode like you were saying they leave it oh, at a cliffhanger, yeah. cliffhanger and it's just like uh no like, yeah i texted on. you i was like yeah. dude what the fuck they just left it at this like i know there's gonna be a cliffhanger because i can see it yep. coming but like uh-huh. i'm just like fuck the episode's ending isn't it like <laughs> yeah 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 i think i checked at the same time you did because you texted me that and then i watched it later that day and i was uh i was like watching it i'm like oh my god okay hang on i have to check yep it's getting this must have been where rolando was like is it near the yeah. end yeah it was like i don't know five minutes before the end or something like that and i was just like no no <laughs> actually really good. you reminded me talking about akashic records that um i did actually start watching this other show called the uh, world end um, it's got like this long convoluted name. It's like, what will you do at the end of the world? Will you save us? Are you busy? Something <laughs> like, I don't what understand hell? what that even means, but long convoluted name seems to be the theme in, in Japanese anime. Mm, and, uh, it, that show is decent so far. Um, it's done by studio satellite, which is the same studio that did like Aquarian and, um macross so as you can tell um from the first episode there's this long like sequence with with music in the background like like pop not pop like pop music i guess but like there's singing and vocals in it and i'm just like wow that's like typical for like aquarian and like macross um and so like you could tell that the direction behind it is like the same team that I'm pretty sure did Aquarian. But uh, so far, the story itself has um, piqued my interest. It's about um, humanity has kind of like been wiped from the face of the earth. And ev- like all these races of like human-like people are living on these little floating islands. that, And they all hate humans because the humans destroyed like the planet or like some shit like that they were fighting these mm. giant monster things and the, their their world is the end of their after this aftermath or something like something along like what they did like what the humans did kind of like eliminated a bunch Brought of other races apocalypse or something yeah and so like all of these humanoid like other humanoid people like have like this prejudice against like oh those humans that got themselves extinct and like fucked everything over for us and so (laughs) like they still have to fight these things um that the humans were fighting using the weapons that the humans created and so like there are these human looking like fairies that can wield the weapons because they look like humans i don't know like (laughs) it's just kind of kind of weird but um, so far, keep watching yeah. all these convoluted shows, man. <laughs> well, that's just like the backstory behind it. But like the show itself is pretty straightforward. There's this like post-apocalyptic world, and there's this main character who is like actually the last human. He like had been like frozen or something um, in like the last man. battle, and is now like living in this like post-apocalyptic society, like hundreds of years later. Mm-hmm. Um, Kind of and reminds me like, of taking care of from yeah. what you're saying. He's taking care of these like fairy girls that are supposed to fight the things that he was fighting like back back then. So yeah, um, it's decent. Cool. How many how many episodes have come out? Uh, I believe like five. Okay. Have you watched all five? Oh, right on. Yes. Right on track. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Nice. Well, uh, anything else before we wrap it up, guys? I I think this is, is pretty much it. I think that's all I um, watched. The other, the only other oh. show that uh, I'm supposed to talk about, Swords or Sword Oratoria, it's been pretty good actually. Um, I thought it was gonna kind of keep going along as this weird like side story, but the what they're adding into it with the kind of intrigue of these weird monsters has been really interesting. So, uh, you guys, have you been checking it out? If not, I definitely need to catch watch up. it. No. 
it's yeah, been I pretty need to cool. Catch up on it, yeah. I, it's been I've been liking it, so um, yeah. you know I would uh, check them out. And if you don't like the way it is by now, then I would say drop it. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Cool. Well, uh, that's it for us, guys. Um, you know, thanks for joining us for this week's episode. Um, if you like what you heard, feel free to uh, head on over to animeondraft.wordpress.com. That's going to direct you to kind of all of our social media and uh, links that we have there, as well as links to all the episodes, um, not only this week's, but previous uh, weeks as well. So check us out on Twitter, uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, Instagram, all that good stuff. Make sure you check out the uh, Elysian Dayglow IPA with that awesome fucking uh, bottle art. Um, check out that tiger. He's, he's laser pretty dope. Tiger. <laughs> the sure. lasers, eye lasers. It's literally and the uh, best. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, make sure uh, we've gone through you know a couple different weeks with uh, all our hosts. So uh, if you liked one host more than the other, you know, drop us a, a uh, an email on the uh, WordPress, and uh, we can figure out you know what we're gonna do moving forward. I think the plan now is to uh, you know go kind of how we did, is, yeah, you know. <laughs> rotate yeah. and move it back but if you guys have any suggestions on that feel free to let us know on the wordpress or twitter wherever um In our but other than that media. uh you know it's it's <laughs> it's been a lot of fun six weeks down so far uh, mm-hmm. i think uh, we're all enjoying it i uh, hope you guys are too but uh, again check us out and uh, we appreciate all the support thank you very much say goodbye thank guys thank you see uh see you later